All right, so we have really exciting news from Cursor. Cursor is now rolling out this agent feature, which is available under Composer. I'm going to display the Composer feature by hitting Command I. You will see that it's right along chat, and I'm going to start from scratch. So I'm building this application that's going to convert a scrape web page into Markdown format. And I wanted to use GPT-40 Mini to do that Markdown enhancement. I can find a library that does the Markdown conversion already out there. There are many of them out there, but I want to test and experiment with the LLMs to see how they can do here. This is something we use a lot, like Markdown format is something we use a lot in our LLM applications. So this could come in really handy for us. So let's see how Cursor can help us build this. In particular, I want to use the agent feature here under Composer. So this is the agent feature right here. And now I can just prompt it. So I'm going to add my prompt here and I'm going to ask it, build a web scraper that converts web pages into a Markdown format using the OpenAI GPT-40 mini model and use Conda for environment. But I'm also going to tell it just focus on the scraper part for now. The reason I'm adding this instruction is because it might want to create the entire app, which is not something I want. I actually just want to review first the, the scraper script and I just need to know that that works before building the application. So I'm going to hit submit here. Again, agent is enabled and you also have this normal mode. And then the model that's going to be used is Cloud 3.5 Sonnet by default. Now I can just hit submit here and then it's going to start to create the necessary files. All right, so it created this environment file. You can see it there. I'm just going to accept that. And then it says, now let's create the main scraper module. So now it's going to create this scraper file, which is what I'm asking it to do in the original prompt. All right, so we have a scraper and then I'm just going to accept this, but it's creating the code, right? I don't really need to accept here one time. I could also just accept here at the bottom as well. The good thing is that it is creating the files for me. This is the whole point of the agentic workflow here. It's generating the code, which is nice. All right, so the next file, it created a readme as well. I'm going to accept that one. And then it has this test scraper just in case I want to test stuff. All right, that's fine, totally fine. I did not ask for that, but that's okay. That could be useful. So it's right here now. And then now I can create an environment, right? And it's going to use this file here. So you can see that this one has a name. And I'm just going to hit run command. And it nicely does collecting the packages. It's doing everything here within this composer window which is really nice because I don't need to go and manually do things in a terminal. Once that command is a valid command, which it should be a valid command, it will run very smoothly. So this is just running and I need, now need to wait. It will install the packages here, which is the OpenAI, the python.env, beautiful soup, which I guess is going to use for scraping and so forth. Okay, so it's working on that. And then, okay, you see some warning there. That's totally fine. It's going through. I can see beautiful soup here. So it's installing all of those, all of those libraries that it needs for the project to work. I'm just going to close some of these windows. I don't really need them there. This one as well. Okay, something I'm not seeing here right away is that it should have something related to the use of the OpenAI model, right? This is explicit right here in the instruction itself. And I don't see it any, anywhere yet. So I'm very confused about that, why it did not do that. Maybe it's too much instructions, right? The, the instructions are too much for the system to do. Anyways, I'm just going to go through the whole process and then I'm just going to give it some follow-up to see if it can fix that. Okay, so this one is to activate. All right, so I'm just going to run that. And it's just going to test the scraper, it looks like. It gave me a summary here of what it did. Now I want to go and test this myself. I actually need to go and run this myself. So I'm going to go here and put it in the terminal because I really want to test what it did. Okay. And then I'm just going to test it. You can see that it just did things quickly here. So it has a test scraper here. It has a URL. You can see the URL here. And what I need to do is I need to give it some URL, right? Let's see. I'm just going to ask it something here. Can you change the scraper file so that I can run the script with a URL as argument. So, okay, now it's going to do that. I'm going to accept this. I'm going to close this one. Okay, so it changed the test scraper. See how it changed. Now I can provide it a URL. So let me just try that. Python test scraper. And then I'm going to give it HTTPS. And I'm going to use my website prompting guy.ai. All right, so that was pretty quick. You can see that it scraped the website there. I can tell it add a function to convert 
the web page to Markdown using OpenAI GPT for O Mini. All right, so now it's going to do that. So it's going to look at the scraper agent and that's where it's going to write things. So this is where it's generating the code now. You can see that it's focusing on that scraper. All right, so we can see that the OpenAI stuff is there now. And that's important, right? That's part of this code that it needs that OpenAI key and it needs to create some kind of that .m file here as well. All right, so I'm going to accept everything here. And then obviously it's going to create that, that, M, that example file right there. And then it says it's going to create that template. And then it's going to update the readme, I guess. That looks good to me. Okay, so this one, I'm going to accept this one. So here are the new instructions. It says copy that, that env, that example to that env and add your OpenAI key. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here, accept this one. I'm going to copy this one and then create a new file, that env. And then here I'm going to paste my API key. Alrighty, so I already did that part. I did not show that part because that's my API key that I'm using from OpenAI. Okay, this one is fine, accept. And it has these options where I can select where I want to output the article to. You can see it right there. Run the script with the dash dash markdown flag. Okay, fine. All right, so I'm going to do that. And on top of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually output it on a specific file. Output, I'm just going to say prompting guide.md. And I will submit that. I guess these are really helpful, these different flags as it's going to do something very explicit. It's taking a bit of time because now it's going to call the model to do the formatting for me. So now I know that it's doing that. You can see that it started to add these different tags here. So I'm going to go to the output file here, which is this one, and let's look at it. And exactly what I was thinking, that now it's using the model correctly. So it's doing the markdown stuff. It looks really nice. And this introduction stuff is because the next part of this guide is the introduction. So it just included that as a header here, which is not entirely correct. And that's something that I can try to fix and try to enhance a little bit better. All right, so it looks like it's working. And now I want to convert this into an actual web app. So I'm gonna prompt it to do that. I'm gonna ask it, now can we convert the code into a working app that takes in a URL and converts the scrape web page into Markdown. Show a preview in the page. Something like that. Then we'll hit submit here. It has all of that in within context, so it should be able to do that pretty easily. Yeah, I'm gonna close these guys here. That's totally fine. I'm gonna close that one. All right, so whatever. Uh, this one, right. So now it has this app that py, and then it's creating the Flask application there. I'm gonna accept that, and now it's creating this index.html with some modern UI. It's gonna close all of these guys. So it added it here under templates, and now it's just updating the README. The README, it's again because if you are building a project, it's nice to have a README, and that's totally okay. All right, so that looks good. I'm gonna accept this. All right, just run the command. Okay, so it looks like it finished things here. I'm just going to say Python app.py. It says from Flask import this one, no module name Flask. And let me see. So I know exactly what happened here. And that's because it did not update with the new libraries. So at some point it should have asked me. Okay, here it is. So he added these. It did not update it, right? It did not update the environment installation. Well, I know that, but you can imagine someone that doesn't know how to set these projects up, they'll be confused about that. So for some of you that are starting, right, this is how you kind of interact with the system. If you see a mistake here, you could add this context here to the system and it will sort of guide you. But I already kind of know that this is the issue, updating with Flask. So if you look at the environment here, it does have Flask here, I can accept it. And then it says, Conda deactivate, and this is what I need to do. Okay, I'm just gonna follow it. I'm very curious how it does things. There's a much easier way to do this, but I'm using the system, I'm using the agent. All right, so, okay, it goes through it again, it's gonna create it, that's very inconvenient. But you can see that these systems are not perfect. This is what I wanted to do this video, because there's a lot of hype about these things online. And these systems are not perfect. I am experimenting with different IDs. So I used Windsurf the other day for this exact same application, and it took me less than 15 minutes to complete it. 
but my experience so far right now is inconsistent, right? I'm creating this, it goes through different problems here. I need to know what I'm doing. Otherwise, I don't know if I can get this up, up and running. You definitely need to know a little bit about what you're doing here. And Windsurf to me is a little bit better in terms of like just getting you started with things. And as models improve, this might improve as well, this whole experience that I'm getting. All right, so now it's creating the environment. It's doing this whole process again. Okay, that took a little bit of time. I'm going to skip this one because I'm just going to do it from the terminal here. Python app.py. And there we go. It looks like it's going to run this time. Perfect. So now I can take this. And then I'm going to open this in my browser. So this is the application now running. And here I can add my website. I can say HTTPS prompting guide.ai over to Markdown. And then it's going to do the whole process. It's going to take a bit of time because it's using the model. I need to verify also what model it used. I asked it to use GPT-40 mini, but I noticed with cursor, it struggles to do anything related to the OpenAI models or any of these models. All right, so I have the preview here and then the markdown here. Okay, that markdown looks nice. So there is a preview and then there is a markdown as well. So it's previewing the markdown. That's okay. It could have been better, the UI at least. All right, that looks good. It looks like it did it correctly. And then I can copy the markdown to the clipboard and now I can paste it wherever. All right, it's working good. And now I'm going to go back and check the model that it's using. So I'm going to go back to the code and I want to check which model it's actually using. You can see here again, GPT-4, this is not the correct model. Cursor struggles with this. They need to get this one right because I do build a lot of AI apps and it's frustrating that Cursor does this every time. And when I use Windsurf for this, I'm going to do a video of that next. You will see that it just does it once you specify GPT-4 Mini, it just does it for you. Anyways, I'm going to end the video here. Thanks for watching. Consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts on this new feature. I think it's very promising. There's definitely a lot more work to do. I'm going to do a follow-up video to this when the updates come in. And I'm also going to do another video with Windsurf with the same application that I'm building here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.